So we're gonna pull the truck down with the lathe on the trailer down in front of here. And then we're gonna pick her up with the uh, telehandler and, and swing her into the driveway. Plan is to single point lift this bad boy and uh, we'll, we'll see how she, she do. So I think we can go ahead and tune the... Hey, look, there's a mouse. Oh, he just jumped. He just jumped. Oh, he just ran into the truck. Uh, Sketch-tastic lift set up. Here it is, in position. Still got the cover and stuff in the truck. Gotta take some things apart, do some leveling, clean everything, but she's in. Got the front switch panel all stripped out with some new, a new uh, 24 volt DC indicator and a new toggling stop button, normally closed. So the idea is to convert this three phase motor to single phase 120, keep this one as the original seven and a half horsepower three phase, but power it with a VFD and replace all of that with this, which is basically just a couple circuit breakers and a 120 volt contactor. So I drew up some schematics. Basically we got 230 single phase coming in to power the VFD. That all stays completely outside of the panel, controls the motor. And then we've got some 24 volt DC uh, signal wires that'll actually run into the panel and connect up into the switch panel here. So this is what we're starting with. We've got the main disconnect which we'll leave in here that actuates on this door switch here. And then we're basically going to pull everything else out. Uh, transformers and contactors, circuit breakers, all this is going to go. We're going to so this is the incoming three-phase power right now. This will get pulled back. Well, we are decidedly, as they say, in like sin. Got a little bit of cleaning to do in there. So these red wires currently run to the front of the machine. They were for 120. This is the three-phase um, I don't know what size it is, 14 gauge looks like. Uh, three phase wire that runs over to the pump. So I can probably reuse 
a couple of these, or at least use them to pull back new cable leading over to the pump. That way, um, I don't have to mess with pulling cable all the way through all that conduit. And inside the pipe head, we've already got it set up for 240, three phase, just gotta hook those legs up. Ground goes there, we should be good. This is a massive hole, so I might reuse the threaded thing that came out of there if I can. The original one did not work, but I did find a cable gland that has just enough thread engagement to uh, clamp the nut onto the back side. So I think we'll run with that. I'll probably just reuse the existing three phase cable to run up to a ceiling mounted outlet and that'll run over to the VFD on the wall. Well, I got a little impatient, so I've hacked together uh, some wires to drive the motor with the VFD. I'm gonna verify correct rotation direction with the jog motor. Okay, looking pretty good. It's set at 60 hertz. dust coming off. Looks like we're at 2.3 amps. Continuous draw. I don't see, oh yeah, I do see oil in there. Alright. That's a good sign. The belt looks <laughs> a little loose. But uh, oil pump's working. Um, finger removers are exposed. I guess the next step is to Turn it on. I think the uh, chuck jaws are massively running out, but the spindle and chuck itself, I think, look okay. A little bit of gear noise. That's just cutting. got the cables pulled through these were a real bear so we got a m12 uh, four conductor sensor cable and then two load lines and a, uh, a neutral line for AC so this line will actually run over to the VFD it's connectorized this will go into the bottom of the box and then in the actual box we've got the back panel mounted Started running cables. Got the old pump, three phase, and a whole bunch of garbage in there. This is the new button panel. I'm gonna replace this one with an illuminated one. But otherwise, um, all new switches are in the start one. So the idea is to run the other VFD mounted on that panel there. It'll run up across and drop down to the back of the lathe. Still gotta run a panel in through the outside wall, which will bring in another 125 or so amps. And then that'll be basically the sub panel for all the CNV solution stuff on this side of the building. And that'll have to run all the way over to the machine shop area for power. Finally, oh my God. Getting this thing set up was insanely freaking difficult. Going through all the chinglish and moving jumpers around on the board. 
Well, here we have it. Full 24 volt DC control. We also have the ability to shut her down with the disconnect. <sighs> wow, what a pain in the butt that one was. Uh, that was a long time spent debugging. I also got highly distracted by finding uh, at least one source of the insane amount of noise. This is where the foot brake goes, and that's a weird 5 16 20 thread. And this bolt was completely rounded into a ball on the end because it was sitting in here like this and just jammed up against the cover, spinning. Anyway, even with me attempting to chase the threads with the lathe, I can't get that bitch to start. I'm gonna order, if I can, another bolt. If I can't, some half inch hex stock, I'll make a bolt. Got everything wired up, and the lathe is uh, ready to go, other than a few last minute buttoning up of stuff. We can now fully run the lathe from the front panel. We've got a nice illuminated coolant pump switch. got a 120 volt um, four gang plug on the back which is wired into the main lathe's electrical enclosure everything runs through here which is protected with a couple circuit breakers and also disables everything when you open it up to the disconnect a far cry away from where it was. We got a three phase 240 coming out here which is currently temporarily wired up to a bird's nest going into our wall mounted VFD. Hopefully it's okay there. It doesn't get too many cockroaches inside of it. So now all that's left is to mock up a backplane here out of cardboard and then go and model it up in SolidWorks. Order that from the sheet metal guys, get that in, and then that'll control some of the oil mess that's currently happening. I've got to mount this leveling foot here and make a leveling foot for that side. Got to install the DRO scales, and I've got to install a piece of 8020 that goes across. And that'll let you have a sliding hard stop for the uh, ingest threading tool. I already used the lathe in its tripod configuration to make some feet uh, for the air compressor. Uh, I've also made some aluminum spacers to keep the bottom of the compressor from destroying the hockey pucks. So yeah, overall I'm Pretty happy with it.